You may have wondered how you go about conserving a skeleton within a museum collection. I guess one of the main challenges we face as conservators is how we treat bones, human bones with respect. One of the main challenges we also face when dealing with our Anglo-Saxon man here is how we tell his story to the public whilst maintaining this balance between respect for him and then telling his story both when he was alive and after his death. So what can we tell when we look at our Anglo-Saxon man? Well, you can see that he's buried with quite a number of objects. Now, the most specific things really are his sword. We have the bowl here, and we also have the spear, and they all point to him being quite a highly respected figure within his local community. So as well as his life as a man, as a human being, his life after death also reveals quite an interesting story in terms of the conservation treatment that has been carried out over the years. Now on his right femur we have traces of animal glue. This would have been used to bond some of the broken bits together. Um, there is also wire repairs in his right femur which look like they were binding the bone together again. Um, a wooden rod even has been inserted into this bone to try and strengthen it when it was put back together. Um, but perhaps the most prolific treatment it's received is this coating of PVA glue. Uh, almost every bone on his body bears some form of this PVA glue. And this is quite bad in terms of conservation because PVA glue degrades over time. Um, it starts to shrink and when that contracts, um, the top surface layer of his bone has actually started to peel away. So with the conservation treatment I undertook, I really wanted to prevent further loss to the bone. So how to remove PVA from a skeleton? Now to do this I had to take a small sample of the PVA glue from one of the bones. I then looked at this under a microscope and then used various solvents on its surface to try and work out what it would become soluble in again. Um, because we know that PVA is water based, um, in this case water did reverse the process. Um, there was a problem though, water will saturate the material because bone is so porous it's got this honeycomb matrix in the middle. Um, we don't want to oversaturate the bone, so consulting with other conservators from other museums, I came across the technique of using a solvent gel. Well, in this case, I use something called agar gel, which is normally found in science laboratories. They grow bacteria in the petri dishes using this material. So you mix up the solution, uh, you heat it up to boiling point, you allow it to cool to about 35 degrees, and then you're able to spread it across the surface of the bone. And this means that the solvent will be slowly released rather than saturating. Um, you leave it for about five minutes and then when the gel is rigid, when it's formed its matrix, you can peel off that layer and you're left with the softened version of the PVA. And then to get rid of this residue, I use cocktail sticks to mechanically scrape it off the surface. And then I also used a plastic bristle hair brush to roll it from the surface. Now this meant that before when you looked at the skeleton, he looked plastic, he didn't look real, and with reference to the respect that we try and treat human remains with, by removing this shiny plastic layer, he ended up looking like a human being again, so nice matte surface, staying true to his original context. Conservation treatment of the Anglo-Saxon skeleton has aimed to preserve him in the context of his original burial environment. But I suppose the question we now ask is why would a man be buried high on a hill next to an old Roman fort overlooking the Thames Valley over a thousand years ago? Now if you want to find out why he was buried high on a hill, then I'd encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel.